Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Leslie Curtis is kind of a fixture around here with us in the radio and, and in our magazine. And she always tells us things that she and I know a lot about. She more so. But so few people do know. And I was just talking with someone, Leslie, the other day about slips and falls. Mm. And I know that your article is um, about flu season, and we're going to do that. But when you think of it, I don't know. I think the world has gotten better about people who are a little disabled. They have yellow stripes. They have, you know, wider door frames and all. But it's still not enough. No. You know, falls are... It's a reason that your place exists, probably. Right. I mean, they're one of the worst things that can happen to the elderly, you know, because if they fall, there's a good chance they'll break. But what what about your sister? Yeah, same thing. She fell and fractured a clavicle. You know, and it's not like she's old, but she, you know, tripped over her cat. Yeah, and that really put her at a great loss for a while. It really did. I mean, now she's she's got to wear the um, bone stimulator and the whole nine yards. Really? Yeah. I mean, they, they can really be, a fall can be traumatic for people that aren't that old. Yeah, that's you right. Know? And um, and when, you know, the elderly could be perfectly independent, have a fall, and, you know, it takes a long time right. to re- recuperate, which is really sad. It really is because... They have to go through the pain, you know, the rehab. I mean, it, it really changes their life. And then when they get home, they have to look at home modifications so they don't do it again. You know, a uh, big reason is area rugs, if they're using walkers or a cane. Animals, having done that a few times. That's right. I almost tripped over my dog the other day. Because they dart. You know, you're not, you're not expecting them to be in front of My cat does it all the time. Um, so big reasons and, um, low vision, you know, they don't see everything. And so there they go. Boom. Yeah. It's uh, and I know you see a lot of that at, um, you know, at Regents Park at Book Raton, but one reason we wanted you to come back, of course, was for the flu season. And it seems as much as we talk about it with people, people still just, they put it off. I don't know why they don't think it's serious until it is serious. Have you had anybody come in there who've had, who has had the flu and now ha- has other serious complications? Um, not yet this year. I haven't seen No, them. but other times. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because they end up, you know, the flu is debilitating, um, especially for the very young or the elderly. So, you know, they, most of them have, you know, other conditions that they're, they're dealing with as they age. They get the flu, they become debilitated. And you see the the secondary diagnosis of pneumonia, just all kinds of things. They they don't want to get out of bed. I mean, it's just it's really tough. So the flu in in and of itself is bad enough, but then when you start with all the other things that go along with it, um, the elderly their skin is so um, easily hurt. You know, with the with the decubitus ulcers and and again, I'll tell you, three days in bed of not moving, and they can end up with a pressure sore. Amazing. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. all these different things that go go along with the flu, um, it's really bad. And, and I, I, I wish people really would take the flu shots. I believe in them. Um, one year, years ago, I did not, and I'll tell you, it was horrible. Mm. Well, I got the flu. And oh. it just kept coming back, and it's like, I will never do that again. Right. And and so when uh, when I had Dr. Mencia on the show the other day, we were talking about the flu because he's such a great proponent. And I said, well, some people say, well, um, if they, you know, if they get if they get the shot, they've heard people still get the flu. And he said, maybe they will, but it'll be very minor compared to what it may have been. Exactly. I mean, there are people that say that you know they were kind of achy for a couple of days, but nothing like catching the flu. So I would still recommend, I mean, some people can't if they're allergic to egg or there's some reasons that some people can't, um, but most people can and they can tolerate it. 
And it's amazing how many people just continue to not get it. They procrastinate. Right. Until they get it. It's like I once had, it's probably the same kind of a thing that I once had a, um, a long-term care salesman who, of course, always complained that people procrastinated about taking long-term care insurance. And one day this one woman called him and um, she said she was in the hospital and she wanted to get the long-term care insurance. He said, you can't, you waited too long, <laughs> you yeah. procrastinated. And that's probably the same thing with the with the flu. Well, people don't want to accept the fact that they can come down with these things, but you can. You know, it's very, very simple. I mean, look at you go to the grocery store. How many things have been touched by all kinds of people? You're in an airplane. I mean, I, I will tell you, you know, I hear people coughing and sneezing and hacking, and I think, I'm going to have a cold. It's, it's, it's not even maybe I'll get a cold. You know you're going to. You know, because it's a small place, space, and you end up a couple days later feeling it. Well, people should know that a cold is not the flu. No. When you get the flu, you know it, don't you? Oh, yeah. You know, you run the fevers, your body aches. You know, it's really most unpleasant. (laughs) I'm not sure. See, I've been taking a flu shot every year. I'm not even sure I've ever had the flu. I don't. I don't really remember because I'm very careful. Because I, um, I have I, I have been asthmatic, even though it rarely comes, but every once in a while, and it definitely gets right to my my breathing, my lungs, and right. it's very dangerous. It is, you know, and, and you know. I mean, it's something that you can take care of in a very short period of time. You know, your insurance will pay for it. Why not get it? Yeah. That's a good point. Insurance does take care of this. So the government is very careful on what they pay for, but they must believe it also. Oh, yeah. They know it. it it's true. It's pay now or pay later, you know. That's good pay now. And I, and Leslie came in and she brought a um, a little button for me to stick on. It's called flu. Stopping the flu. It's up to you. That's right. So nobody's, But doctors do. When you go to your doctor, I would hope that most doctors would say, have you had your flu shot yet? They do. But many people aren't, haven't gone to their doctor, right? And it may be too late. Exactly. Or if they're in the hospital, they're, every single patient's asked, do you, have you had your flu shot? Do you want the flu shot? Most of the time people say no. Because we do the same thing. We get, the, we get that piece of paper from the hospital that says they were offered, they refused, they already had their flu shot. We ask them again, would you like the flu shot on admission? Most of them, I would say a large percentage of them say no. And, and they, a lot of them won't even remember no. that when they had it. So you have to go back to the doctor's records. That's the other thing. I don't go to the drugstores to have them. I like to have a doctor do that because it's records now for me. Right. So I've told, you know, because they, they want to do that at the, the various drugstores. Yeah, they will. But you know what? And I agree with what you're saying. But if it gets them in the door and they get it, yeah, that's better than nothing. No, it's true. And and there are different strains of flu, but it seems like they stay on top of what the new strains are, don't they? Yeah, for the most part. And it, you know, I mean, I mean, when they make the vaccine, it, it can be somewhat different two months from then. But you're still going to have, you know, much better coverage than if you didn't get the flu shot. And I was thinking about the word, Leslie, flu. It used to be influenza. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm not good at this with history, wasn't it that people were wiped out with the influenza years ago? It was a tro- big total. Well, yeah. I mean, because there was nothing to prevent right. it. Right. And people just got, and this was a big um, disease problem. It was. And it, you know, it really, you see even on the news where they'll say, you know, it's going to be a heavy flu season. Boy, nothing would make me run faster right. to get the flu shot than right. hearing that, because especially here in South Florida, you know, we have so many visitors from up north. The flu season started October 1st. People start coming down with in about a month. And guess what they're bringing with them? All those germs. Yeah. Okay. So here, Leslie is taking herself away. She's not afraid of having germs because she's had her flu shot, as have I. As I, as I have. So <laughs> it's Regent's Park of Boca Raton. 
and it is a very friendly place. It's family operated. That may be one reason. I must say it's so different when you go to these corporate places. You know, they have 10 all over or 100 all over. And it's not that way at Regent's Park. People know your name. It's almost like Cheers. That's right. <laughs> it's almost like Cheers. And the nice thing is, you know, if you, and we don't ever talk about this, if you are um, a religious, if you're orthodox, you can take care of those people, can't you? Oh, absolutely. We are a kosher facility, black kosher. Um, People can bring food in if they are not kosher. They just can't eat it in the dining room, but uh, they can bring their own food in. Every Every room has a little refrigerator actually at every bedside for the short-term rehab patients. Um, so they can bring food in. They can, you know, they can eat whatever they want. They just can't eat it in the dining room. Um, but the kosher food, you know, chicken is chicken. No, it's much better. Yeah, Orth- well, it's better. Kosher chicken tastes better. I have to say that. It's just there's something about when it. When people say, oh, but I'm not kosher. Well, you don't have to be. <laughs> That's right. It's just you know? it's the way that they kill the chicken that makes it so much better. It is really right. good. But maybe what, even though we're talking about the flu, um, I would think that it's a very good, a very good issue with with Regents Park of Boca Raton, that people who are Orthodox can actually stay there for long term, can't they? Oh yeah, absolutely. And you can really take care of all their needs. They would have their ser- their Friday night um, service and and all that. I don't think we've ever discussed this, have we? Yeah, we have the service. It's usually Friday afternoon. Um, right now it's led by two other residents, long-term residents. Really? Yeah. And they get a pretty, pretty good showing. That's very nice. Yeah, it really is. And then people who want to go to church, you, you have a little, on Sunday, can you have something for them? We have, um, I believe it's once a week, a priest comes in, you know, obviously anybody that belongs to a church long-term, their priest or, or pastor will come in to see them. Right. So, yeah, we, you know, we're not just... Um, or one denomination, right, right, right. But that's really so important as one ages, and um, and so you know we talk about the flu, we talk about falling, but religion as one ages seems to be more important. I think so. You know, when people get become ill, religion seems to pop back up to the forefront. You know, where they might be, they might say, you know, I'm not really practicing, but then when they get sick or ill or something happens. You know, a lot of times they do tend to grasp at their religion again. So. They go back to their roots. Yeah. That's kind of funny you say that because they also want their mother. I mean, it's funny. I've seen a lot of this as one ages and gets ill. They talk about their mother. You yeah. notice that? Well, because, it, it, you know, you go back to how you were raised. So, yeah, it, it's true. It, it It's interesting to, to be around you know, both the long-term residents and the short-term rehab patients. You know, it's two different groups. Um, Most of the long-term residents are usually in pretty good moods unless they have some dementia, in which case, you you know, you really never know how they're going to. Like, I can walk out the door on Tuesday, say goodbye, everybody, have a good night, and they'll, you know, because they're waiting to go into the dining room, and they all all say, bye, have a good night. <laughs> the next night you could walk by the same people and right. two people will respond. Yeah. Or whom. <laughs> right. You know, so you, right. you never know um, how you're going to find people, but you understand that, you know, it's... Right. At least people are being loved and cared for. That's really right. most important. No one is expected to be a certain way. They are what they are, and you're taking care of them. Right. And we're all different. Yeah. You know? So it, it's... um. I mean, I love the job just because you get to see all these different, you know, facets of people's lives. And some of them will be really angry that they, you know, have to stay in a facility. They may understand that they need that kind of help. But usually they slowly accept it, you know, and become part of the community. Well, and you have lovely areas there. You have a big room like a living room where people can sit down mm-hmm. and watch television play cards um so it's like a it's it's really like a hotel in a sense but you have that extra benefit that someone's taking care of them they're going right. to make sure they eat that they get to bed they get their medication uh it just has a it's had a, such a bad reputation for so many years before but now 
anyone, if you have to go to a uh, to some sort of a senior, I would call it a senior home. I want to call it a home because it's, they try to make very much like to be a home. Right. You really have choices. They're not going to say, okay, you have to go to this one. You have to go there. No, no. And, you know, the nice thing is, I mean, especially for our long-term residents, they're they're monitored closely. You know, if you're living in your home with even a 24-hour person to assist you, our residents are monitored, their weight, their labs, everything's looked at. You know, um, if there's a change in their mental status, we, you know, we'll probably get a urine for CNS because usually that's what it is. Um, you know, you listen to their lungs. You you can stop something bad from happening to them. Or again, if you're at home, you don't go to see your doctor once a month. You know, you don't have a nurse there 24-7 to keep an eye on you. Because especially the nurses and the aides that work in the um, long-term unit, they know their residents. I mean, they know there's something going on. And they call the doctor and get the orders and take care of it. Just think about this, folks. So if you're living there, we can go. I know we have short-term rehab, and we should talk about that, but I'm into this other right now. So just think you you live there. Someone's cooking your that You don't have to go shopping anymore. They're cooking your food. <laughs> and they're making your bed. And they're helping you take a shower. And there's activities. I mean, there's everything from. And bingo, don't make fun of bingo. Bingo is one of the most well-attended parties. Because it it's so much fun. I can get caught up at bingo. Well, it's good for people cognitively too. Yeah. So, do they win? Pro- what do they win if they? they I win? have a I have a picture up. This kind of short lady won this humongous teddy bear at bingo. The prize was bigger than the than the resident. <laughs> so they do win things. Yeah, and and it's really it's really wonderful. And you know, listen, as one ages, people are are more satisfied with simple things. And mm-hmm. just having, like, even a new toothbrush. I mean, it could be anything that they got that's that's new and that's theirs. Well, and they also have um, probably about twice a week there's people that come in and they're selling, like, purses or scarves. or And the residents will go in there and purchase. You know, it's not going to be expensive stuff. But, you know, it's just it's like going shopping. That's right. And they buy these things. They yeah. want them. They yeah. want to look good when they come down to dinner, don't they? Yes, they do. So it's... It's a good place for them. A lot of activities. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's such a great reputation. Regent Spark of Oak Redone is the premier community. It is so lovely. And, of course, that's why <clears throat> that's why Leslie Curtis comes here every month, because she wants to assure you of the quality and the type of a senior community it is. Not all. Don't be misled. What you're hearing from Leslie doesn't mean that all of the other places are like this. No. And you've lived, you've worked in a lot of them, and you know right. the difference. And it's like, I'm telling you, today I looked out my window because I faced the front. And there's all these residents out there. Well, they were having an activity, and it was so nice outside that they brought them all outside for it. <laughs> it's like, what are they doing out there? Right. <laughs> so, of course, fun. we're all wondering what they're doing. It was an activity, and it was so nice out they brought them outside. Get some fresh air, you know. It's um, great. It is. It really is. It's, it's a lot of love going they on there. They stay busy. Yeah, I mean, the long-term residents can stay busy most of the day. Right, and then they have, you know, they have a nice dinner, and then you have things at night for them. We do. We have card games, um, movies. They do things in the evening. Most of them, you know, by evening, they're happy to be done, you know, for the day. But some of them, you know, are are active in the into the early evening. Yes. We have a book club. You have a book club. Now, have you ever sat in on that? No. Oh, you should. That sounds pretty interesting. I should. Interesting. And, and there are quite a few really avid readers. So they read the books mm-hmm. and then they discuss them. Right. That's really very sophisticated. And then they have, um, you know, I don't do the crossword puzzles and all, all those things. But there are several of them that do that all the time. Really? I'm not good at those things. They're, so smart. They're the ones that are really smart, aren't they? Yeah, they, you know. They are smart. So, I mean, it's probably a good thing to do, but. Um, yeah, I get discouraged. I try to do one, and there's always words. I, what do they want? You know, yeah. I don't know what it is, so I don't do very well. There's some people, of course, I think I had an aunt that was, boy, she was the big crossword. You know, she was the one that did all those, and and she really knew. But I think because a lot of it, it's like you get in a habit of it, and there are words that you've heard before, you know. Right. 
But no, I don't do that either. But the book club sounds like it would be fun. Yeah. And, and they um, have a cooking cl- club, cooking class. Now that I know because I once went and they served me the soup or whatever they were having. They had last week, and I was so disappointed. I don't know what I was doing, but I missed it. They had fried pickle day. Fried pickle day. Have you ever had a fried pickle? Never. They're really good. Oh, now tell me about now, it. I would never think that they would be good, but I was in a Chili's or some restaurant, and they said, fried pickles. Ah, I'll try it. They're really good. No, what do they do to the pickle? They like bread it and fry it, and it's really good. So we had pickle day. Bread it and fry it. So they they it they're good, and um so they, they had they usually because I was there once when they had it. They have different kinds of pickles and cheese, you know, different things, but the fried pickles are a big hit. Well, then they're going to love the pickle recipe movie <laughs> yeah. when it comes around. They're going to love that. And, of course, you have to wait. I guess you could get it after it's out. But do you ever take the residents to movies away? I guess you don't have to because you get them there. Right. We get them there. Exactly. Plus, we have, like, the cable channels. There's, like, 52 channels. Yeah. So right. You don't need to do that. Yeah. No, that, that's a, so, so, but you would have the big room where people can go. They can either sit in their room and watch it. Or they can go and to the main right area, and um, and I want to go back before we get run out of time. I want to talk again. Let me first give everybody some information. So the best thing you can do is go look at Regents Park at Boca Raton. You don't have to take our word for it, uh, even though our word is real and and all. But you can go there and see for yourself. You won't believe it. The phone number is five six one four eight three ninety two eighty two again. It's 483-9282. And the nice thing, it's very easily located near the Boca Mall. Um, it's actually on right off St. Andrews Boulevard. And it's in a residential community. You may have a little trouble finding it because it's so, after you get in the community, it just looks like it's just another big home somewhere. Yeah. Can't even see it. It's off, it's off, the, it's off right. the road. Right. So unless you know what you're looking right. for. I mean, we have a sign, obviously, of but um, but it's really beautifully developed that way, so that it's not like sometimes I go by and on the federal highway, you see this big community. I would not want to live in one of those. So yeah. Now it just seems like it's not the same. No, this is, it's is like those truly nice. Big motels. We have the gardens, right? You know, the patios, and and I'm telling you, in this weather, when coming here, it was so nice and windy, as you could tell. I got in my car, and it's so beautiful out. My car was 91 degrees. It's like, oh, you know, but it was beautiful, actually, outside. And I guarantee you the patio, everything's going to be mobbed today because it's just so nice. out. And that's with the short-term uh, rehab patients as well. You know, in between their therapies, they'll go sit outside. It's nice. And, and we can jump there while we still have a little time. Oh, wait, you have a website I want to tell them about because everyone goes to websites now. You can go to G- Regents parkboca.com it's regents with an s parkboca.com and then you'll be able to see a lot that's on the website let's uh, move back then to the short-term rehab so people are listening to us now and they're feeling fine and they trip so we started with this whole yes. organization and they somehow break a hip or they break or, or unless your shoulder was uh, dislocated something happens they go to the hospital or whatever has to happen and now they can't go home so they have a choice. What are their choices? Um, their choices generally are to a skilled facility such as Regents Park. Um, and there's a lot of them. There's, there's a lot of them. If you don't know anything about any of them, you may be refer. You, actually, a lot of times the case manager will give you a sheet of 30 of them. Say, pick one. <laughs> right, lots of luck. You know, if your kids are in town, they may go look at a few. And I really mean it. People come to tour... And they're from out of town looking for a place for mom or dad for short-term rehab. And they have that day to do it. You know, so it, it's just so important to know where you would go should you have the need. It's like, you know what hospital you'd go to. So do I. You know who your doctor is. You should know where you'd go for rehab because, you know, the stay in the hospital is, is so short now that it's really hard for especially the elderly, to go directly home. You know, if, if it was secondary to a fall, why did they fall? You know, those are things that I have to be looked at. jumped in front of me. Yeah. Well, I slid on my dog's toy about a month ago. Did you? Yeah. 
<coughs> Excuse me. And what happened? I went down. Got at least one rib. Really? Yeah. And it's painful. But I'm not 90. You know, so you can imagine how hard it is for somebody that's, you know, older. Okay, so that person would have, let's say, if they couldn't stay in their house, they couldn't move around, they needed a couple of weeks of help. They come to short-term. Correct. Short-term. So we give them the therapies, you know. What would the therapies be? For somebody like that, it would be physical therapy and occupational therapy. We want to get them back to being as independent as they were prior to their hospitalization. Are they going to get massages? Are they going to get whirlpool? What are they going to get? They're going to get physical therapy probably a little over an hour a day. And that's to help them with walking. Mobility. Mobility. Um, Occupational therapy is activities of daily living. So feeding, grooming, bathing. Uh, We do have a kitchen set up. They can, you know, practice in a little kitchen if they live alone. So it's the things that you need to be able to do that you don't even think about. I mean, you don't think about how you're going to get in and out of the shower. Mm. You know, or that maybe you need a shower chair now or, or, you know, um, a long-handled shoehorn you know there's all this different stuff that you can get to make your life easier Um, but you don't think about it in advance that's why you you really have to know where you want to go so you get the best and how long can i stay as long as you meet criteria under your insurance whether that's medicare or some other insurance and that basically says that if you're showing progress if your goal is to be at your prior level of functioning or as close as you can be then so long as you're still making progress, you'll you'll meet criteria. Okay. Well, Leslie Curtis, you, uh, you're always just right on top of everything. We always have an eclectic show because we talk about everything. So it's 561-483-9282. Go say hello to Leslie Curtis and tell her that you heard our radio show together. Thanks, Leslie. Thank you so much. <laughs>